14 years ago, Chris Rock made a comedic documentary about black women's obsession with their hair. The doc was called Good Hair. It explored the then $9 billion black hair industry built on straightening, braiding, twisting, coloring, extending, and weaving the hair of black women. The doc insinuated that black women have greatly overemphasized the importance of their hair. They waste hours at the beauty shop. They risk hair and scalp damage to attain a subjective, fluid level of beauty. They foolishly attach their identity to the hairstyle of the moment. Rock's doc politely pointed out the insanity of it all. Over the past decade, American popular culture has aggressively normalized and spread mental illness. So it should come as no surprise that in the years since good hair, black men have joined black women in their hair-brained hair obsession. Cam Newton, the former NFL quarterback, is the poster child for this offshoot of the transgender movement. Matriarchal culture has produced a generation of black men who have adopted the mindset, values, and emotions of black women. Last week, Newton appeared as a guest on NFL insider Josina Anderson's podcast, Undefined. The conversation sounded like an excerpt from the 1990s chick flick, Waiting to Exhale. Anderson provided Newton a platform to argue that his NFL unemployment is directly tied to his hairstyle. Take a listen. I feel like it impacted uh, you getting an NFL job, being accepted by a brand, or um, or just how you're looked upon as you, as far as employment and being the face of an organization. It's been hinted, mm. and it, I'm 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 not changing. Uh, but yeah, people have hinted towards to say like, Cam, we want you to go back to the 2015 clean cut Cam. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that was a different me. Like right now where I'm at, it's really embracing, you know, who I am. Right. But My did kid. you ever hear a did you ever hear of a team specifically like when you were vying for, you know, job, particularly when you, you know, you came back, obviously you ended up with mm -hmm. the Panthers or whatever that um, you heard specifically that might have impacted as far as your look, the dreads or just your style. Or no, you would you would you know, you would hints toward it. And, you know, like I gained a lot of great counsel from a lot of people. Right. And the thing that is always mentioned is, yo, Cam, you scaring people with how you look. And I would say, yo, like, I'm not going to name names, but there's other quarterbacks that's in the league that don't look like me, but they got long hair. They don't scare them, do they? You know, so, I mean, we can go tit for tat and tat. For so j just think about this. Cam Newton is complaining because he's hearing whispers that NFL coaches, executives, hey, hey, they want that 2015 Cam Newton. So who was the 2015 Cam Newton? Oh, that was the Cam Newton that was the MVP and played in the Super Bowl. Imagine NFL teams wanting that version of Cam Newton back. Just how racist and unfair. Cam should file a lawsuit claiming NFL owners are aren't obeying the Crown Act, the ridiculous California law that prohibits discrimination based on hairstyle and texture. The law is a bone the Democratic Party has thrown black women because they know hairstyle is a critical issue for black women voters. Some people tie their votes to taxes, immigration policy, abortion. Democrats believe black women vote based on hairstyle options. Cam Newton thinks like a woman. He told Josina Anderson, my hair is deeply rooted in my culture and the people who look like me. Huh. I'm not sure how to accurately describe Newton's hairstyle. He wears dreadlocks that are shaped into spikes that stand straight up. He looks like a clown. He occasionally covers his hair with a Mary Poppins style bonnet. What culture is Cam reflecting? Who originated this culture? Kunta Kente? Frederick Douglass? Booker T. Washington? Martin Luther King? Marcus Garvey? Nelson Mandela? Malcolm X? I mean, who? Maybe 
It was Madam C.J. Walker, the first black woman millionaire. Walker made a fortune in the early 1900s selling black women petroleum jelly and sulfur to put in their hair. Among athletes and young black men, Cam Newton is not alone in his, in his hair obsession. Many male athletes have adopted the belief that a feminized hairstyle is central to their identity and culture. Men are every bit as obsessed with their looks and modern fashion as women. In an earlier interview with Josina Anderson, Newton and Anderson talked about attending a fashion show in Paris. I, I think, do we not, do we have that clip? I, I, I asked for the clip of, yeah, let's play that clip of them at the, I heard them talking about the fashion show in Paris. Uh, when I was doing my research on this with the help of my team, you were the first NFL female insider. So you're a trailblazer. Thank you. OG. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you get a lot of, a lot of, you only, I don't think you get your flowers while you doing can. It. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But if it wasn't for Josina, it would be a <laughs> lot of you. Up, but. I appreciate it. Yeah. And you know, the last time I saw you, we were in Paris. Mm. Yeah, we did uh, Fashion Week. I know you were in your entire splendor there, doing you, doing you, both of us, doing us always wow. without fear, yeah. <laughs> without right. fear, dressing, being our total selves. So Absolutely. we're in equal company. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I just close your eyes and just that you're a wannabe NFL quarterback. You play a hyper masculine game. You, you, you want back in the league, and you're chit-chatting with Josina Anderson about a fashion week in Paris. You, you, I mean, this is beauty shop conversation, man. What are we doing? I mean, I, 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 I get it that we like to flirt, we, we like to mingle with uh, female sideline Barbies. Uh, and Josina Anderson actually uh, broke news and was a legitimate NFL reporter. But Josina Anderson is also someone that has used her sexuality to get really, and I can't knock them, All, most of them do it, and, and, and I, I can't knock them. If, if I was a woman, I'd do the same thing. But. This is what you're doing, Kim. You're, you're sitting around with Josina Anderson, talking about Fashion Week in Paris, and it's, I just don't know how we got here, man. What is going on with us? Pro athletes, particularly black jocks, they dress outrageously and use their stadium and arena entrances to walk the runway as models. It's all supposed to be cool and hip. It's feminine. They've adopted the personalities of women. From NBA star John Morant to NFL star DK Metcalf, black jocks spend an abnormal amount of time coloring their hair. If Cam Newton were still in his playing prime, NFL teams would deal with his desire to be a fashion icon and hair model. But as a backup quarterback, no NFL team wants to deal with the distraction of Cam's childlike feminized identity. No coach wants Cam influencing their starting quarterback to waste time on fashion, dreadlocks, and corn rolls. Cam should have played tight end in the NFL. His personality quirks would be accepted. Tight ends are not leaders. They're baby wide receivers, divas in training. The quarterback position is for leaders. Despite all the efforts to emasculate football, the game is still hypermasculine. It's counterproductive to inject a feminized leader with a victim mentality into the quarterback room. Cam is out of the league for the same reason as Colin Kaepernick. Diminished skills made teams reluctant to deal with the victim mindset and obsession with looks and branding. Cam should quit conducting interviews with reporters who will tell him he's a victim makes him look weak. He behaves like someone who folds at the first sign of resistance. The 2015 NFL MVP Cam Newton 
and the 2010 National Champion Cam Newton. The clean cut Cams were resilient warriors who fought through adversity and criticism. They were super Cam. Unfortunately, Newton pivoted to supermodel Cam. He succumbed to the matriarchal culture promoted across social media. Nobody wants a transgender quarterback. Josina Anderson won't tell Cam that. Only a man will tell Cam the truth. Real men, unfortunately, are in short supply. Bye.